And now, Freelance Heroism presents Dragon Heist. Hey everybody and welcome to Freelance Heroism. My name is Dees. And I'm Rachel. And before we even get started, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to everyone out there who donates at the Patreon, in particular those who donate at the producer tier. Mm-hmm. Rachel, yes. would you like to let us know who they are? I would love to. We want to say thank you to Duncan, Nate, Breakmeister, Rebecca, and Chris Sones. Thank you so much, everyone. We really appreciate it. You help us make a better show for everyone out there. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I have had a hard time with this intro this morning. (laughs) I've done it a billion times. Can't do it today. Mm -hmm. Uh, So so your support makes it so that we can take 150 takes if we need to, (laughs) because I'm a complete fucking moron. (laughs) Rachel! Yes. We wanted to talk about. Oh well, we have we have an announcement, don't we? First, we do. We do have an announcement. An um, announcement. So, um, people who've been listening may recognize that we're sort of coming to the end of our goal in Dragon Heist. Uh, so, we only have a few more episodes of our Dragon Heist game. So that is coming to an end. Um, and then we higher are going energy. To- higher energy. Hi, go higher energy. <laughs> really sell them, right? And um, we're going to have a between campaigns one shot. Turn the energy up, turn it up higher. (laughs) With some familiar characters. Um, And then we're going to start a whole new campaign that everybody is really excited about. Plug it up to a car battery. Give it that energy. (laughs) (laughs) The the new campaign um, has... Some. I don't know what if you're gonna cut that in about. I'm just like zazz it up a little, zazz it up. You're like a, you're like a show mom in the back. You've got this, Debbie. You've got it. <laughs> One, two, so, three, push. <laughs> so anyway, uh, our new campaign is coming up in um, the near future, and everybody's really excited about it. It's going to be really fun, and um, it's very, uh, there's like some 5e stuff, but David has gone uh, further into homebrew territory, which is is very cool. Jazz hands. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, can talk, a... we can talk more about it in a, in a future intro. Right, but I mean, just to know mm-hmm. that the game that we're in is coming to sort of a sort of a close yep then what was it one shot one shot right and is it the one i'm thinking of i believe so turtle soup turtle soup and then uh and then comes the next big thing right yes. and i think i think everyone's gonna be super excited about it mm-hmm. i feel like giddy as a child about the whole thing <laughs> so all right yeah let's go to this intro okay rachel yes House of Durgon. <laughs> you watch Durgon? We have watched the first episode because as of this recording, only the first episode of House of the Dragon has come out. The first episode of Durgon. <laughs> and I have not read the book that it's based off of, but you have... Fire you, and blood. You have read it. Bloodfire. Bloodfire. Fire, blood, iron, blood, fire. <laughs> and um i i like it so far i was a little cautious i still feel a little cautious going into it because uh i felt like the last season of game of thrones was disappointing i want to make a defense of of all of this mm-hmm. um but i'm going to let you continue your argument but i want to <laughs> make a pin, i'm putting a pin in it okay but continue okay and um i don't know i i it's cool to see like new characters in a familiar world. Um, I don't know if I I don't feel like as invested as I did when I watched Game of Thrones, but because it's been one episode, it's been one and episode. The other one was eight seasons. So. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, seven and seven point five. So. <laughs> um, but I I I like a lot of the characters, although there's no character yet where I'm like, that's my guy. That's my dude. You've That's... already seen him. You just don't know him yet. <laughs> I'm gonna help you out here. You've already, you've already, you've already met him. You've already met him. 
<laughs> Wonder um, who you could be talking about. Okay, so just a uh, quick uh, defense. Well, not really a defense, but explanation about uh, Game of Thrones' finale. The books uh-huh. aren't finished being written. True. So they don't know what the hell they're doing. These guys are showrunners. They're not writers. Yeah. Um, George uh, did not finish the books. He doesn't have a roadmap for them to follow. And also, I'm perfectly honest with you, if he would have given them the appropriate or actual ending and then they would have followed it to the T, then it probably would have killed the book sales, which, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. The books are great. Mm -hmm. You don't want to fuck them up for fucking those two. Plus, the... I don't know how true this is, but I heard a rumor that they wanted to do like some like st- Star Wars movie or they were they wanted to work on some other project and so they were quick to get out. Yeah. I well, I thought that that was true and then after the finale of season 8, they got fired from their Star Wars project. I don't know if that's true, but let's hope it is. I look, <laughs> let's I just was... start some rumors on this intro. Okay. Deal. <laughs> Did you know both of them like to put a pool cue in their mouths and <laughs> run at each other until one of them gags? Isn't that oh, no. weird? Isn't that a weird absolute truth? <laughs> Isn't that a weird absolute truth that I've heard from multiple people? Allegedly. Yeah. yeah. It's called mouth jousting. I don't know. Do we do we clip that? I don't know if we clip that. I don't know if that's I think allegedly it's okay. Allegedly it's okay. Okay. Oh. I don't I don't want to get in a lawsuit. Right. <laughs> yeah, all I have to do is hang out to the end of the lawsuit and it'll fall apart. <laughs> um, now, look, I, they seem like nice guys. I don't want to give them a hard time. I know mm-hmm. how it is to be a creator. Uh, but at the same time, you know, that, you know, yuck. That was gross at the end, right? Yeah. I defended it up until about when I couldn't anymore. Yeah. Right. And I understood how difficult it was to try to be handed 90% of like a Shakespeare play and then told to make it good <laughs> at the end. I'm like, you know, I'm not Shakespeare, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? So, you know, fair enough. Mm-hmm. That being said, finish your projects before you start running at the next one. Yes. You know? Yeah, I would agree. Anyway. Uh, but <sighs> House of the Dragon is, is pretty cool. I like that there are more dragons than the name. So, should, yeah, Durgons. Should be there. Yeah. You've heard of Dragons? <laughs> You've heard of them? Okay. I like the uh, the swords. I like I like name swords. I think that's that's very cool in Dark Sister in stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder. I haven't seen Dark Sister yet. They've only kind of showed the periphery of things. Mm-hmm. I am excited though. I do like Damon. Yes. Um, the Rogue Prince. He's my guy. <laughs> and I, I just I I just want to to clarify. Mm-hmm. Um, Auto Hightower for the internet. Auto. I saw some people <laughs> arguing about whether or not they thought Auto Hightower was a dick the other day, and let me tell you, uh, I can confirm mm-hmm. that he is a dick. Okay. He sucks balls. He's the worst. <laughs> I hate him. Okay. He's a fictional character who I hate. <laughs> right. What if he does something like really good in this the episode tonight? <laughs> Jump out of a window. <laughs> that'd be how to, that'd be how to turn the whole franchise around for me. <laughs> no, I really like the show, and, mm-hmm. and I do I do like that it sort of takes the things that um, in the last show that we were kind of we held on to, and we're like, are we gonna get to see these big dragons? And then they finally reveal them around season whatever three or four, where they're real mm-hmm. big. Look how big they are now. And just kind I of noticed, toss it. I noticed in in the show. Danny's dragons look very similar to each other, but right. I read the books like after I watched the show, and in the books, like they're described as looking very different from each other. Right, Caraxes is really long and thin. He's the bloodworm. Mm-hmm. He is the dude. Yeah, I like how in House of the Dragon, the dragons actually look different from each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Th- I want to see the Dance of Dragons. I really mm-hmm. do at mm-hmm. the at the end. I don't want to talk about what it is. If you paid attention or if you read the books, you should already know. But um, it is it is going to be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Auto Hightower is a total, total dickwad. 
So just <laughs> buckle in for that. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, is that is that the whole intro? That How could be. Uh, we've been talking for like about ten minutes, I think. We well, you did restart a couple times, so. We could talk a little longer. A couple times. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I would hate to hang you, hang no. you around. I know you're busy. No, it's fine. What's the What's the name of this episode? So this is Dragon Heist episode sixty nine. Nice. <laughs> we just call it nice. Can we just change the episode title to nice with like seven eyes? To the victors go the spoils. I think we changed the episode to nice. <laughs> Can we can can we get a vote? There's only two of us here. There's only can two. Can we of us vote? <laughs> All right, vote to change it to nice. I vote yay, and I also proxy vote for Nate because I know he would no, say yes. No, Nate's not here. He you would say yes, but he's not here. He would say yes, but he's not here. I am his proxy. He That's did, what proxy he means. Up, It'd be, it wouldn't be a. He proxy. didn't show up to vote. He didn't show up to vote. He's pre-registered. <laughs> he's a mail-in. He's old. He can't get out of the fucking <laughs> hospice. Look, oh, I'm voting. I'm voting on his office. behalf. That's two to. Look, how do you think D Walk would vote? Be honest, he would vote yes. That's three to one. I think we changed the episode title to. No. Me. I think it's just really funny. Is that a no? Are you going to exec edit executive decision? Say no. Look, you're the one that uploads these episodes. <laughs> There's only that's, so that's much I true. can do. That's true. So I guess when people go to their podcast feed, they'll see like what <laughs> what it's you gonna, chose. It's gonna be nice. <laughs> it's gonna be really nice. Nice. Oh no. Okay, re read it again, but with the appropriate title. I will not. <laughs> All right, go ahead. How about you just read up to episode six? Right, and then just wait for a second. <laughs> I'll give you the nice, and then you can continue. All right, you ready? This is Dragon Heist, episode 69. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, no. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> It's my wife. <laughs> She's like, nice. That's right. an inside joke. I'm, anyway. I'm ending this recording. <laughs> okay. See you at the end. He begins to move and his shoulders begin to go move and he shifts. And now the staff drops to the floor underneath him. I'm going to step away from it. I don't want anything to do with that staff. And you right see now. yourselves with an adult gold dragon in the room, which takes up a good quarter of the room. And his voice now booms. Since the masks are down. Right. Well, we very much appreciate you showing us being honest with us how do you know Rainier? we can worked. you prove it well, we have the stone he gave us permission to come here we the tree outside wouldn't let us in unless we had permission he came with us vouched for us to get in and then uh and here we are he closes his eyes for a second age you can tell with your magic spell goes off and off the dragon is that what you're he <laughs> goes back down and looks at you all. The Trent has acknowledged that you came with Rhaenyr. Well, we did. We yeah. don't want to cause any harm. Adri, give me an Arcana check. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's really good. Um, 27. Right. Ooh. You're picking up something your detect magic didn't fully grasp. The, the the there's a ward itself in the area. A ward. Mm -hmm. Can I? The room is warded. Against, against what? And it's affecting him. Like he can't leave. 
probably not only can he not leave, it's probably driving him insane. Yeah, it could be what's going on with this mental state. Um, looking around with my detect magic and my arcana check, can I see, is it like there are runes carved somewhere that are sort of set this ward or um, something like that? The walls, the ceiling, and the floor all radiate with the aura of enchantment now that you've seen it. So it could be the staff. The room itself, actually. Okay. Yeah. So maybe if we destroyed that or got him out of the room, it might help him. The question is, the wording might be keeping him in the room. Yeah. Maybe we can distract. I don't want to. I don't want to talk this out too much. Do you trust us since we came here with Rainier? Is there some modicum of, of trust between us? I cast judgment on each of you. And he looks at you. Each of you, his eyes begin to glow. Uh, each one of you give me a uh, charisma check. With advantage. Oh, thank God for that. Uh, 18... 20. 11. 20 total. All right. I trust two of you. <laughs> the other one's a politician. <laughs> <laughs> well, we both. All right. Well, we I both hope trust. you can count on me voting for me in the mentor. <laughs> well, we both trust Rain. So I don't know why I assumed that he was the one you don't trust. <laughs> 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 you just automatically assumed it was me he was talking about. You're the male thief. That's not true. Stuffing people in chests and taking armor. And- he peeks up. No. We have a thief in the room. No. Not no, not that no, a no. Joking. It's a joke. So you called her a thief. Has she stolen from you? No. It's a playful friendship thing. Yeah, it wasn't so much she was stealing from me. She was just hiding things from me. It's a bit of a game we play, so to speak. Mm. We've also met um, another dragon recently. Dragons are bad. Not this one. This one was Not this one. friendly. As a matter of fact, it's without young... that dragon, still, you know, we, we couldn't have gotten here in the first place. It was very helpful. You killed that dragon? No. Not at all. We became friends. I told him a story, and he was very young. He was very playful and rambunctious, kind of. Well, he must have been. Speaking of the scale that you had to use to get through the door. That's correct. We wouldn't harm something that didn't need harm. We figured that it would be wiser and maybe kinder to approach and ask for a favor. I think that can illustrate maybe that we don't mean any harm to you. All right. I mean, we're as far as references go, we're killing it over here, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Friend of the I mean, dragon, did us a favor, know that the fucking kid of his boss or whatever, like... We're like practically cousins. But he doesn't trust me. So because you're a politician, man. <sighs> while they're sense. while they're talking to the dragon, <laughs> I wanna kind of move so I can get a closer look at um like the edge of this warding just to see if I can get any more sort of information on like its structure. All right. I like the idea though that sometimes people just make a bad first impression and it takes a little while. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, when he went to judge everyone, he was, like, looking at me and looking at Adri, and we were just, like, kind of stoically looking at him, and he looks over at Nate, and he's, like, picking his nose or something. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm sorry. What? So, as you guys continue to talk to him, Adri, as you see the ruins, you see it's, um, they literally almost bled the magic into the walls on the floor and the ceiling. 
was like etched in or are they no when they when they cast it they didn't actually use like um runes or anything they actually literally cast it upon and forced it into the room right almost sealing the room with it okay do we notify him do we tell him about it i don't know i um, hate to lose this uh kind yeah, of affection that we've had mr know. uh mr a have you have you left this room in some time i cannot i have to guard the treasure the treasure is here for me to guard i cannot leave right the treasure right. is in this room he looked at the pile yes the gold 500,000 pieces of gold. That's I've counted much, it. That's so much money. <laughs> the gems are mine. Like, the that's gems are my other... food. They were given to me as payment to watch the gold. Have you noticed, um, and I'm going to gesture towards like the door that we just came in from, be like, did you know that there are some coffins over there? Do you know if there's anything weird in them? And those are in the others. In, in any of them. In any of them. The bodies of those who built this place. Oh. He Have... killed every single last dwarf. Oh. Did what? Every dwarf that built this place. To keep the secret. Never remember. No. Oh. Well, I hate to tell you this. There's a rumor up top. People know about it or suspect. You don't think that the better way to protect the treasure is to maybe take a more proactive position rather than letting armies barrage the gate? You see that tunnel that leads to the shaft that you came down? Mm Mm-hmm. I can barbecue anyone to a crisp that comes through it in a single file. But you didn't when we came. Because you didn't touch the gold. Nor would we. Not everyone was that lucky. You can't breathe fire forever. If there are enough people coming, then that's that. But they also have to find the three keys to get through the door. They have to survive the traps figure out the right hole to open and then come down i'm going to point to the gold and be like that is a lot of money you will not believe the number of people number of armies that they could line up look process of elimination they worked their way through here somebody's going to get that treasure you can't stop all of them so i think that there's a smarter way to do this what do you think humans always think of course we do. Tell me a story. He plops down and sits and looks at you. His face about five feet off of you now. Dragons love stories. I'm starting to notice. <laughs> Tell me the story of how you will you can protect it better than me. Well, it's not really a story so much as this is a plan. Fascinate think, me. Think about. Have you ever been part of a castle siege? Have you ever seen a castle siege? In my youth. They're devastated. You've been there. You've seen it. People hole up inside their little castle keep while waves upon waves of soldiers crash against the front gate. And eventually the same thing that always happens, happens. They eventually get in. Everyone in the castle is weakened from the long time they had to wait it out. And they end up losing. It's because the defensive position isn't always the best. Sometimes you have to go on offense. Now, while you're in here, locking up kind of like a tortoise, blocking yourself from... I am no dragon turtle. I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. You're, you're getting hung up on a, on a word. What I'm saying is that you're taking a very defensive approach. You are very good at disguises. Look at you. You could walk around and be in the public eye and get information before the threat amasses large enough to become a problem. 
right now, you were not even aware until we told you that there's a mind player out there trying to come for this treasure. You didn't even know the threat was ready. It was coming. The mind player couldn't get in without you. It could have. No, not with that stone. It would have been able to take over Rainier or his family or his loved ones and have somehow coerced Tim's way in here. This is an existential threat. If the goal is to protect this treasure, then you need to start being a little more versatile. You're using 10th century tactics in a 30th century world. You're behind the times. You need to adapt. If you're going to perform your mission, you need to change. I had to do the same thing. It's hard. I get that. We're people of tradition. We do things the same way we've always done. But sometimes you have to give a little. In order to to be what people deserve, you have to change a little. And I will accept your company. Lock the door. The stone is here locked with you. And they cannot refine the keys then. We're not going to last 100 years. No. This is a temporary solution. The stone will. And the stone will be locked in with me. Then no one will be able to open the door from the outside. That's not true. Somebody built this place, which means someone can unbuild it. I think that a person of your age and wisdom should be smart enough to see what's happening here. If you're the kind of being that I think you are, duty-bound to a goal, I get that. If anyone here gets that, it's me. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices. This might have to be one of them. I will not leave the gold. He shifts back to dwarf mode. He picks up his staff and walks back to the corner and sits. (laughs) Well, then... It won't be us, but somebody will take it. Eventually, you will fail. And I'm very sorry that I couldn't convince you otherwise. And I, I'm going um, to dramatically turn and start to walk away. I'm like, think about it. I, I call Kavir and Adri over into a conference based on everything that I've just heard. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to budge and that's, that's fine. He's whether it's the ward or his sense of duty or some combination of the two, he's not going to budge. He's not going to leave, but as you say, someone will try and find a way down here. Now, I'm wondering, he says that he made a comment that um, seemed to make me seem that we're not the first to come down here. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if we don't uh, set a trap of our own since we've come across so many of them down here so far. What do you the have mind players. Well, the mind player says that this is what he wants, the treasure. We've come down here and we've seen that it is just literally that. It is gold and it is gems. There is... We don't know that that's the treasure he's after. We know <sighs> that's the treasure the dragon's guarding. But there was another path we didn't take. And on top of that, we don't know what that staff does. That could be the treasure. Well, the dragon itself could be the treasure. A mind flayer who gets into the mind of a dragon could be devastating. Well, this is an existential threat, not just for him, not just for some fucking gold, but for everyone. Well, he says that he can barbecue anything that comes down this corridor. Maybe we give him an opportunity. That's a risk. We put the flare in close proximity to the thing that he could use as a weapon. Then I suppose what we've done is we've, we don't necessarily know what's down here, but whatever it is, whether it's just gold alone or gold and something else, we don't want the mind flare to have it. So we'll go back up to the service and dispatch of them and be done with it. But he's not leaving this room. And even if he physically could, I don't think he would anyway. 
what if we maybe there's a way that we can ask him to help us well, maybe barbecuing is a is a good system but maybe a flare being in close proximity would be difficult we could have miss. the flare do you think the flare would even come on his own or would he just bring a an agent he seemed to be adamant about being here in his self but that seems i don't know flighty to me miss adri in your opinion can this dragon leave well i need to look at the wards more so the wards are either keeping him here or they're what's made him how he is right now so if we remove the wards, there's a chance that he'll be able to leave and that maybe his mind won't be clouded. But then mm -hmm. there's also a chance that doing so, I'm just afraid that maybe keeping him contained isn't a bad idea either. <laughs> if we remove the wards and he's suddenly a free mind, what's to say that he won't roast us no matter what? I don't think he's given us any reason to think he would do that. He's been, well, I mean, he might be grateful that you know, we we're able to help help him leave. I mean, it seems like like I don't think he volunteered to do this. And nor does my understanding of what these dragons are like align in any way with Never Ember's behavior towards the people who built this place. All right. Well, then it sounds like we're coming to the conclusion we need to find a way to dismiss the ward. Mm-hmm. That's not that? my department, unfortunately. I can hit it. That's about all I got. If we had like a like a dispel magic. But Would we I... be able to do that while he's here? Would he be resistant to that? Well, we would be casting it on the wards, not on him. I think he would notice. Well, he said he was fine as long as we didn't touch the gold. I don't know that he would sit here and let us do something like that without resistance. Could we do it from back in the chamber where the four coffins were? Where we he's came dragging, down? He's got to notice the magic going off. They can smell that shit. Well, I don't have a way to dismiss magic. I could ask. I mean, if we left, I could see if like Victor has something. I hesitate about letting too many people know about this place, though. Well, he might have a scroll. Maybe. You know, it just dawned on me. Hmm. Have we really been paying attention? We say we don't want to lead anybody else down here. Are we sure we haven't already? The tree wouldn't let him in, right? And we know the tree's still up since he just talked to it. Yeah, that's true. That would be a sentry point. All right. Then no, I, suppose... I guess someone could slip past. Yeah. Well, if, if they we were, were close I... to us, they could have come in the same time we did. Yeah. Or if they looked like us. Who knows what yeah. a tree's perceptions are like. All right. So... We can go back to the surface, attempt to find some way to dispel this ward, get the dragon on our side. We also have another corridor and hallway we haven't looked at that might be worth a gander before we leave. What shall we do? I think we need to settle on a plan before we start coming and going too much out of this place. Well, if if we need if we want the dragon on our side, the ward has to go. That's the that's the assumption we're all making here. Yeah. So that should, should be also, our next goal. Let's talk to the dragon as well. See what his He locked the doors on us. Can we even leave? That's a good question. Is the David the door that we came in is that still open? Um, you would have to go back and up 
the shaft to see which doors were closed. I mean, to the coffin. Room. Oh, the uh, oh, the coffin. The, the brass covered. dome is still open. But the doors that actually exit out probably won't be. We heard something move around. Yeah. After he talked about shutting us in, so I'm assuming that they're closed. Maybe there's another tool that we can use to dispel this inside this location. We didn't check the hey. other path. Hey, wake up up there. Oh, you summoned me. Mm. We've reached a bit of an impasse. Maybe you have uh, some insight here. I'm pretty sure you can see what I'm looking at right now, right? Yes, I do not wish to be trapped down here with him. Okay. There is nothing then, to learn down here. Oh, I uh, Yes. So we think we might not be able to get back up and out. As far as I can tell, he has not locked the main door. That's fortunate. Though he shut the secret passage doors that you reached through here the first time. You didn't take the main path through. No. You guys went, you, um, you guys took the roundabout. Yeah. So there's another way out. Mm hmm. All right. Well, you took the then... easier path, technically. Hmm. The door you would have to go through, you would have to break it down with the dwarven hammer you found. Oh. <laughs> Not like the first time. Yeah. Well, all right. Then we have a clear pathway out of here. I don't suppose there's any way perhaps you might be able to dispel the war that has this dragon trap down here, do you? Mm -hmm. Almighty, all being powerful, super oh, mighty catfish, catfish god of legend, catfish of catfish of all catfish, the mightiest of catfishes, doubly breaded, doubly loving. Um, please, please bless me with right. your. Oh. A dispel magic or or possibly a protection of good and evil spell would break the control over the dragon for an hour. Hmm. For an hour, I don't, I don't suppose you could use me as a vessel to get one of those things done, could you? Wait, hmm. for an hour that's not much time, It'd be but enough time he's... for him to leave, though. Or you could try to engage him, but I would take his staff if you're going to engage him. There's no, but you don't have don't the wanna... time to attune to it. I don't want to talk to him like that. I don't want to aggress no. this guy, he's doing a good I wouldn't. job. There's a reason. The old Lord of Waterdeep left him here and cursed him here. And that reason is just to protect the gold, or is there a story mm -hmm. behind that? To protect the gold. Okay. It was a powerful creature that he was able to bound by the wards. So if we were to release the wards, he would no longer want to guard the treasure? It'd be easier to release him of the wards than release the wards. You would need a, you need art mages to destroy the wards of this room. Okay. Well, but if you that. could banish him long enough to get him out of the room, then he could leave. Would he be resistant to that effect? Not if you cast it on him first. Well, I mean, in general, just dragons are mighty. They have protections against all kinds of things. Would this be something that he would be able to We'd be able to manage. Or right spell, you should manage. be fun. <laughs> Brainfish, grow great. Mm. Brainfish of With the right spell, game. you should be able to handle it. He, okay. though, is extremely weak against the ward since they were built and crafted to, to actually trap dragons. Right. Why do you so. think the brass dragon cannot come in the city? It's interesting. The staff prevents it. Well, then let's let's try it. What do the you think? staff also can command. Command what? What do you think? Dragons. Just dragons or whatever its user desires? If I remember the magic, and it has been some years since I've studied the staff, 
It can target anything your heart desires, but it can specifically target dragons. Huh. A greater effect. Well, that would be bad to fall into the wrong hands. Absolutely. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can break his mind out of this prison. Okay. And then we can negotiate on equal terms with them. Then we got to go back up to the surface. Okay. Or you can ask the child that's upstairs. No. The child? Do you say that, Rain? What child? Oh, shit. The young teleportation mage that has used Misty Step to skip past the Trent. This motherfucker. I told him to stay at Troll Skull, which is probably exactly why he followed us. Are we sure it's that version? Uh Do you have more information? What we, 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 I know. Um, well, then how am I supposed to know? I, wait, which, uh, which Victor? Uh, which, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, let me, oh, uh, oh, mm-hmm. oh, oh, just a simple, <laughs> very <sick>. southern, <laughs> country, very, uh, yeah. very foghorn like, I'm just a regular <laughs> lawyer, catfish, yeah, you know, and uh, just, yeah, when you had the stone, have you been in contact with the other Victor since you've had the stone? No. No. He only knows Maybe. one Victor. Uh, now he can read your mind and see the other Victor. But he has no way of discerning. I think that this if he magically called... um see if it goes historically how I've been rolling these mirror universes, magically when you seek one, you seek you pick up everyone. When Age Rude messaged one of the Ludos, it went to both. When you scry one of them, it ends up picking up both. Rachel, right? Because the, the scry spell can't configure between the two. Right. When the other Adri sought out Victor, she found the one because it was the first one easiest to get to. Well, she was also targeting the the spell stone. Mm-hmm. She was targeting the spell stone that he kept in the hand. Rachel. Yeah. Episode title: To the Victor Go the Spoils. <laughs> Very Archie nice. the victors go the spoils with an S. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Do you see what happens in the moment where we're really mm-hmm. experiencing the game and then we can come up with a title? Mm-hmm. Yep. I can slam dunk a title in game. But when we're like doing the intro, she's like, I I, maybe a pun about like, I don't know, like drow. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, fuck. We have, we have breakfast in this episode. Can you give me a breakfast pun? Yeah, uh, what? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, there is is your brain on magic. Smash. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) there is a Victor upstairs. Conveniently, I'm going to start like heading towards the the way that we came in. Mr. A. Mm, The the dwarf kind of looks up from his rhymes. Yes. Since this is uh, apparently where we stay now, we figured we'd go get a look around. We'll be back. We'll see you soon. He nods. It'd be nice to have conversation again. I can imagine. All right, we'll have one shortly. We'll All I have soon. is the wall to talk to. <laughs> All right, well, I guess uh, let's head out then. All right, you guys head up. Um, you guys climb the rope and go up. Yeah, Adri first. Probably because I was. You'd already left. Yeah, I yeah. already. Yeah, like I already was heading out. It'd right. be funny if Nate went up there and untied the rope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get up there. I'm gonna look around. Look around. I mean, like, where are you? A voice, um, from nowhere. How'd you know? 
that was in the script. I was hoping it was going to be more funny because that would give us a clue. I told you to wait a troll skull. Mm, yeah, no. It's really dangerous here. You need to wait a troll skull. Yeah, and people came to troll skull. Who? He, he holds his hands up and does his little. Well, you're you can't in, see him. He's invisible. You're invisible. Right now. <laughs> I, so he does his motion. Second. He does his motion invisible. It's like you're invisible right now if you're, you know, doing something. He lets the spell down. You see him sitting on one of the brass domes. Length of hair. He's like, there is um, there's something weird with them. Like their eyes are glossed over. L said, "Run!" I ran. Okay. Thanks, Ghost. Ghost Butler paying off in the clinch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to look in your brain for a minute, kid. He, I'm gonna pull she out a straight up looks at you and his <laughs> hand begins to glow. Out of the bag. Not literally, Victor. Maybe kind of literally, but not like in an invasive way. Four by four cross panel across the top. Easy. Y'all, easy. Take said, me an hour. y'all said he brain surgeries failed. I heard you talking about it. I'm not, getting not better only. at it. Mm-mm. Practice makes perfect. He's Eight not, times a charm. He's not going to open your brain, Victor. I'm just going to flick the spoon against my uh, grieve. Like, tick, tick, tick. <laughs> that looks you peering. What do you want to check? I want to know if you've got one of those uh, slugs in you. He shrugs. All right. You're not cutting me open, but what do you want to do? What about the catfish? Catfish help? Can he read the slug? Uh, you picking up anything in this kid's brain? He's the same asshole he always is. Well, that's he said he's the me. same asshole he always is. <laughs> that's good enough for me. <laughs> Victor, that was oh, him thank saying you, that, my lemon buttered god. <laughs> <laughs> Victor, you just you... look mouth open, like middle fingers up in the air to your stone in your head. <laughs> and I'm not paying Oof. your jar this time. I'm going to go over to Victor and just, I assume he has a backpack or a book bag or something. Mm-hmm. And I just open it and I start going through it. And I'm like, what kind hey. of scrolls do you have in here? Also, check for gold so that we don't have any issue with the dragon later. Oh, hell no. I saw what happened. You guys poked that other gold pile. Yeah, you damn mind. I haven't touched the gold pile since. Um, I haven't touched shit. <laughs> I would say smart kid. And then I'm going to like kind of rustle his hair a little bit. And then I'm going to slow it down. And I'm going to be using my fingers to like measure. <laughs> As you go through the bag, you see a couple um pearls and some gold he stole from the two urns up above. I knew these weren't trapped. I'm just going to look at it, Rain and Kavir. That's what you're going to intuit from that? Put them back. I put them back in the, the book bag. No, not in the book bag. <laughs> Give them. Back. Shoot, we're on a time crunch right now. I'm looking for scrolls. You find um, the Nathar's Mischief Scroll. You find the Comprehension Language Scroll. You see that he has blown the Misty Step Scroll. That's how you got it. So you got yeah. through here. Yeah. Yeah, that Trent was scary as shit. That was supposed to keep you out. That's the point. But that's just nah. goes to show. This just goes to show our point was very accurate, right? Somebody this just was got right in. Person. He's a kid. Hmm. Sort of sort of impressed. Yo, by the way, you guys listen to some shitty music. He says, rubbing the back of his head. (laughs) (laughs) I took that apart. Yeah. Thank God it wasn't in the other room. I don't know what the hell happened in that one. Another title. Harps (laughs) Harps According to Legend. What do you want to do? What are you looking for? We're trying to get rid of some, uh, some markings. What are they called? Or release someone from being award. under award control 
award. That's the word. There it goes. I was sorry. I was thinking that one. Oh. Like what to spell? Yeah, yeah like, like a, a dispel or a protection. Uh, I don't have any more protection spells because I wasted those when I broke into the library. Uh, I know a dispel one, yeah. I had to. That's how I got through the traps at the library. He, can you cast one right now? I could, but don't I need my spell slots later? You're going to need this one first, trust me. All right, yeah, I can. Gonna... I can cast the spell magic. Okay, I'm going to need you to be real cool about something and keep <laughs> your hands to yourself. <laughs> okay. She, got, she went full George Thorogood there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. You know, there's like, there's like necromatic magic down here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would do. There's there's some it. like massively burning evos over there. Yeah. Um, I'm really weird about this one, though. I want to open it. Don't. don't. No. Uh, no. 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 That one's do that. weird. I can't. That school's. It's weird. Okay. It's like no. there's... Yeah. Our our working theory is it's an aardvark that spits venom. That's not our working theory. I want one. That's okay. Victor, That's I, need you, about. I need it's you. I need you to focus. If you didn't know, it's <laughs> an eater. They eat. Oh. oh. Okay. All right. So Look, fun. Victor. Hmm? Um. Okay. So. We're gonna need you to cast um, a dis a dispeller protection um, to help get uh, Mister A out of this control of these wards. I think they're scrambling his brain, basically. Mister A, he is the downstairs. Guy downstairs, very nice gentleman, mm-hmm. having a kind of rough time. Do not touch his stuff. Do not talk Do not. about his staff. What kind Do of staff not. does he have? It's uh, okay. Not important. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab him by his by his shirt, and I'm gonna lift him off the fucking ground, and I'm gonna hold him real close to my face, and I'm like, "Look, before the surgery was going to be elective, if you say anything about this staff, if you say anything about Mister A, if you're disrespectful in any way, or if I find out you've been pocketing any more of this goddamn gold, I swear to God, this is going to be very invasive." <laughs> Okay. I'm going to set him down. Now look, this has to get done. It has to get done well, or all of us are going to be dead. Do you hear me? And when I die, bad things happen. Okay. So get it together, kid. He nods. All right. Who Who's tying the knot? Uh, should still be. It <laughs> should still be fine. <laughs> Unless rain has messed with it since we've come over here. No. That shit was awesome. That was not awesome. <laughs> hey, can you I saw get look one... at her face when it slipped. It was like, oh. Phew. <sighs> All right. So, um, yeah, I guess you guys head down the rope then. Yep. So you guys head down the rope and you guys walk Victor in the room and his eyes go wide. His mouth drops. I this... grab Victor by the hand. <laughs> Mr. A. He looks up. Ah. This is our companion. He squints. You bring a child? This is my brother, Victor. Elves. Human. Okay, I've been down here a while, but I... I... He, He begins to scratch his beard. I've never seen that before. We're interesting what, folk. You, you've never seen siblings before? You're an elf. He's a human. He's my brother. So I'm going to hold my hand up. He looks as like, are you a half elf child? Oh. I'm just going to mouth it. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to be like, I'm going to hold my hand up to my mouth and be like, adopt it. Like, <laughs> Dorf just nods. Ah. Right, don't make it weird. Which one? <laughs> the, little, the little one. Okay. Makes more sense. You know, elves don't sleep. I've heard something yes. about that. Yeah. We're well aware of that. It's, you know, that means true. we can talk for years to come. You'll outlast them. 
we have many long conversations i think i'm gonna be the one that'll last the longest i hate to tell you again we have a Mm. long history of uh (laughs) we have a long history in the kavir line of being (laughs) long-lived remember that argument that me and adri had like in like game 10 like where it was like 10 or 11 where she kept trying to talk about how much older she was than me and i'm sitting here looking at like fucking nine thousand years in the rear view like yeah okay lady (sighs) all right so uh i'm gonna look over at victor uh just to get a beat on like what he's doing what his thought process might be at this moment you can see he's casting under his breath what is he casting detect magic okay that's all right his eyes go wide that 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 mm-hmm. that 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 yep that. i'm gonna squeeze just, victor's hand <laughs> i put my hand over his mouth it's like yes we will wear we got it you, do do your thing because we're fucking suicidal i just look at the mm-hmm. dragon and be like i was just talking to my friend victor here the child about my stunning record at surgeries <laughs> i have a tremendous i'm a doctor by the way i think that we had already gone over that the, the dwarf nods. Right. So anyway, what is there to do here? Do you just sit around? Do you have conversations? And I'm going to like use my hand to kind of like wave at them to do their thing while I engage the dragon in conversation. He continues to talk to you and tell, begins to tell you older stories of the time before the vault. That's interesting. Well, and I'm going to tell him about the battlefields that I was on and kind of the stories about uh, the kind of like kind of maybe not full on bloody stories, but like the the really dire ones that we ended up eking out of victory. Things that, you know, show um, like sort of like play to his want to guard this thing, like all feels lost, but we held out anyway. Those kind of stories. All right. Fletcher whispers. Now? Yeah. And he that's begins... when, and I'm going to get real flamboyant mm. with my story. Go ahead and give me a charisma check, Kavir. Oh. To keep his attention. Uh, uh, 18 total. Oh. Yeah, no, wait. I only get the two... Yeah, 18. 18 total. I, I, do I have the plus four? The die f- for D4? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think I've had a chance to... I think we should have done that before we did this, but okay. All right. 16 plus two. No, you're good. 18 is actually perfect. Um, Victor begins to cast... And he begins to move his hands in motions and he begins to mouth the words quietly as he preps. And as your, cont- uh, your conversation continues to go, the dwarf just keeps looking at you, nodding along with the story as the spell triggers and goes off on the dragon. Do I notice a change in his look? Um, his eyes kind of gloss for a second. He begins to like, kind of like move back and forth and sway. And then his eyes focus and relock on you. Hey, hey, my name is Dr. Kavir, the The Raven, Raven. right? You've been trapped here for a long time. We are trying to help you. I need out. I need out. I need out. Right through there. Get out of this room. Go. He grabs the staff and hauls us out of the room. We'll meet you upstairs. All right. Yeah, he quickly bails out of the room on you guys quick to get upstairs well done kid good job victor kind of slap him on the shoulder like harder than (sighs) he would like the kid just kind of drops for a second don't touch that gold i swear to god no 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 i'm just no one's at school is going to ever believe i casted a a spell on a dragon and it worked and you Mm -hmm. cannot tell them what the you can't tell (laughs) them you can't Look, my surgeries last 18, 20 hours sometimes, kid. 
and I'm going to start going up the, the rope. Greatest and thing in the wanna... world, and I can't... Oh, yeah. on, you don't want to see what there. he does with the tubes. You bought him more tubes? <laughs> I hell? bought him a machine that makes the tubes suck automatically. <laughs> uh, Victor just kind of looks and starts snickering. <laughs> <laughs> go, Victor. Go. I'm just going to push Victor out of the room. <laughs> I love Victor sometimes so much. <laughs> He's like, I bought him a machine that makes the tubes suck automatically. <laughs> like, you fucking dweeb. Oh, man. Don't get any proud of deals when we get back to Troll Skull. Get up the rope. He climbs up the rope and he sees who goes up the rope first. Uh, I'll go up first since I want right. to talk to the dragon. You get the rope first. Um, what is Victor's term? He kind of stops at the top, looks at the door, and kind of like pauses, checking. I just want to make very clear that that kid is responsible for you getting out. If it weren't for him, we wouldn't have been able to do this. He nods. It's okay, lad. Um, he, he's like, lad, you're safe. I won't bite you. Nice to meet you. Actual you. Thanks, over. I, you too. That bastard trapped me down there. It's unfair. The gold yours. <gasps> hey, okay, wait a minute. Focus. I don't, I, I'm, I'm gone. You said it's ours. Hold on. Hold on. Before you go, do us a favor. All right. You owe us that much, right? I can be persuaded. <laughs> I hope you don't. Do you take gold? <laughs> uh, we have a problem. The city doesn't deserve your help. I'll give you that. But being good doesn't necessarily mean that you can turn your back on something because they harmed you. Is that fair? There's a nobility, a silent nobility in the types of things we do. Keep speaking. There's a mind flare. He's hurting people. We need you to mentioned stop him. him. We have to stop him. And we could really use a hand or a wing. And that's. Now, when you evil... draw him down here, mind flare is an evil blight upon resist or the existence. That's true. We'd like to get him out of here just to help people. The people weren't the ones that trapped you down here. It was just that asshole king. There's never just one mind flare. Right. But this one seems to be working solo in this area. We take him out. We can begins to scratch. Least... Is he separated from the brain? It seems like it. Mm -hmm. The worst part is that with all he knows, if he gets back, it could really put this place in jeopardy. And he wants the gold? He doesn't want the gold. I think he wants the staff or he wants you. And that puts other people like you at risk. I heard an old story long ago. There was a mind flare trying to use the body of a dragon to house an elder brain. The types of damage that it could deal would be devastating to not just this place, but many places. You must be stopped. Absolutely. I agree. It's good to have you on board. We will flay him. See that? He does surgeries too. <laughs> Is there like a burger joint down here? I'm starving. Um, I ate the last one that came down here. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, that's not really my vibe. I more like a steak kind of guy. What about you guys? You guys hungry? Victor said some like glassy eyed people showed up at Troll Skull, which makes me sound like they're under the control of the Mind Flayer. So that's the goal then. We have to get the Mind Flayer. Right now, he's unaware. We've been isolated from anybody that could spy on us. 
So he's unaware of what we've actually had happen here. He's never been down in the vault. We could close up those secret passages and then have the dragon surprise him in another room. Walk him in there, tell him the treasure's here. He doesn't know what he's looking at or what he's looking for. I thought you didn't want to get the mind flayer close to the dragon. Well, he's going to have to in order to deal damage to him. The way I figure it, though, is now that the dragon is capable of thinking maybe a, a, you know, I don't know. I, is there another plan, another way? The dragon can leave now. Yeah. Right? So I'm hesitant to let the staff into anyone's hands. I think that due to self-determination, a dragon wielding the dragon staff and one that we can maybe trust as a decent person is probably the best place for it. But I'd prefer to have it destroyed if, if at all possible. Well, what the was the Yeah. He's like, the staff may be impossible for you to destroy. And I don't mean this any offense to your humanity. I don't trust it in the in a, in a hands of a race that doesn't live over a thousand. I don't trust it in our hands either, to be perfectly honest with you. So he should take it with. Right, but... <sighs> what does the staff do? It controls dragons and it controls things it can make like it controls he speaks the truth and it's controlling it also gives one either a, it gives one strength against dragons if you go to fight dragons you go to attack dragons your odds greatly improve with the magic of the staff okay. also it gives you a chance to control them command them Not ideal in the hands of some of these people. Especially your mind flare. That's the last thing they need is another way to control things. We can set up a meeting with the mind flare and then notify you. The only thing is that once we make a plan, he can read it. Hmm. One of your minds can't be read. The other one, you do have a slight protection, but it's not against mind reading, it's being against being controlled. And the third of you can't be protected. What do you suggest? What do you recommend? I could put a charm enchantment upon you that'll not allow the mind flare to take control of you the stone will let him take control of one of you but I can do the charm to where he cannot read your thoughts it'll shield you well, let's make it happen and then we'll set up a meeting with him and then we'll rip his head off and I'm gonna look at Adrian and be like Sound good? I know you were sort of on board to do that before. I mean, I wanted to do that. <laughs> well, we then let's do it and be a while done ago. With. <laughs> we got, Go what if we got our ass kicked there and we all died and Rachel was the only one that was like, let's do it now. And then we <laughs> died and we just all look at Rachel like, see? <laughs> well, look at it this way. We'll, we'll still get to do that and potentially we'll all be a whole lot richer. Though that won't mean as much to some as it will to others. <laughs> I'm going to get the nicest fucking tables you've ever seen and the most jewel-encrusted tubes with which to suck <laughs> juices out of people's dead bodies. Gross. It's going, they're going to be like, wow, I don't think I've ever had fluids pulled out of my body more efficiently than with those sweet-ass huh. tubes. I those actually... are solid-ass tubes, bro. I mean, it's, I don't, look, you guys, you guys have really painted up the image of me being bad at this but i want to keep in mind that the first time me and adri did anything in this game together she was unconscious like 10 times and i brought her back <laughs> every time and then since then mm -hmm. you've been alive yeah unconscious yeah. a few times and brought back with all of yeah yeah the juice I, ain't great 
The juice ain't yeah. great. All right. I would but say, it works. I would say we're not like we're not doing a bit that you're a bad doctor. It's just that a lot of the stuff that you do is just gross. And we don't like the gross parts of it. <laughs> Well, you know, it's not like, ew, gross, a, a healing potion. It's, look, ew, gross, this healing potion smells like bologna. Uh, you're talking about bologna potion, and <laughs> it is solid. All right? It's made from yeah, scraps of other it, potions. It is a potion, so it's supposed to be a liquid. It is, but it <laughs> can a, a, a little, okay? I don't have all the <laughs> fancy equipment that I need to make to, like, warm super it up fluid. And- super fluid. It comes out a little bit like wax, okay? My bad. <laughs> Take a bite of your potion and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you have to hold the potion bottle in your hands to like warm it up. <laughs> so yeah, it, like, you have to roll it between like your fingers <laughs> so that it heats up. And then yeah. you, you take the hook and you scrape the sides off like a peanut butter jar. <laughs> yeah. Then you put it between a tortilla and you put your choice of of either my healing pico <laughs> and you eat you eat your potion. Just shut up and just <laughs> take the hit points. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Freelance Heroism Plays Dragon Heist. Uh, If you would like to support us, please check out our Patreon. We're at patreon.com slash freelance underscore heroism. Uh, We have different things there. Character journals, art, bloopers, stuff like that. Our cast includes me as Dr. Kavir the Raven, Rachel as Adri the Highborn Artificer, Nate as Rain Triche, Dockside Efficient, and of course, D Walk as Dr. Midnight and everybody else in the game. Thanks for listening to Freelance Heroism Plays Dragon Heist. And uh, we don't invoice in this group. We'll be back next week with more episodes. So stay tuned. Do you wanna you wanna get that on the record? Do you wanna get that statement on the record right now? What do you mean? Oh, Otto Hightower? Yeah. He's a cunt. Okay. Yeah. And I don't mean it just because Damon said it. I mean, he's a legit, <laughs> legit dirtbag scumfuck. <laughs> he sucks. Okay. <laughs>